Hey, what's up? Ian here, and today I'd like to talk about this uh, FIO FH11. It is a 1DD plus 1BAIEM, uh, and the retail price for this is 40 US dollars. It's available on uh, FIO's website, so if you guys are interested, do check out the unaffiliated link in the description below. Alright, so uh, this IEM is actually a sister IEM of this uh, FD11 which I rev recently reviewed. Uh, the accessories, design, build quality, fit and comfort is the same as the FD11. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on the uh, technical capabilities and the sound performance of this FH11. I'm not going to go through the accessories uh, and everything else. Uh, just going to focus on the sound. Now, if you guys want to find out uh, more about the accessories and all that, I I did mention it in my review of the FD11 so uh, I'll leave a link up above here so you guys can go and watch that video uh, but in this video I'm just going to focus on sound for this FH11 so let's not waste any time let's jump straight into first the uh, specifications uh, it's got a 10 millimeter carbon based dynamic driver and as for the balance armature is a, a customized uh, balance armature the frequency range is 20 to 20,000 hertz impedance is 24 ohms and the sensitivity is 111 okay so that's for the specifications next let's talk about the drivability for this IEM uh, it's, it's quite similar to if, uh, its sister which is the FD, uh, H11 pretty easy to drive I tried it with my iPad my iPhone uh, my all my dongles my dabs uh, no problem driving this in fact uh, I've been listening to this at about 30% volume uh, sometimes 40% volume so yeah pretty easy to drive okay now in terms of gear matching now this is what I strongly recommend uh, anything that is uh, warm analog and old-school sounding right so things like the iPods uh, they are pretty old-school and pretty rounded uh, and the Sony's Walkmans, they are pretty rounded as well. So these players, uh, they they match really well with the FH11. In terms of dongles, I would suggest uh, the FC6, right? This is the uh, Darwin with the Darwin R2R. Uh, and in terms of uh, things not to match it with, uh, Shangling M0 Pro, this is too, too edgy and too sharp for this, so I wouldn't recommend this. In terms of dongles, M15 is a little bit too sharp and the, you know for this, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend this one, okay? So that's for gear matching. Now let's uh, talk about the tone and timbre for this. Uh, the tone and timbre for this is warm, it's fun, it's casual. Uh, it's got a lot of emphasis in terms of the uh, musicality of it uh, and uh, pretty analog sounding as I mentioned. Uh, so yeah, this is for more for casual listening with technicalities, right? Pretty technical uh, IEM. Now in terms of uh, the technical part of this, uh, the overall resolution of this is pretty good. Uh, it's above, definitely above its price point, all right? $40 sounds so resolute. Uh, in terms of sound stage, it's actually pretty wide, okay? It's got outside my head type of sound stage. Imaging and uh, sound separation is pretty good as well on this, good sound. Uh, sonic transfers uh, and uh, yeah position positioning of the instruments are pretty uh, precise uh, in terms of detailed retrieval it's a little bit uh, of uh, laid back side so I don't really you know uh, get much details from this IM but it's pretty clear all right the, the, whatever I'm hearing is pretty clear it's just that it's not uh, as detailed as other IEMs and also for resolution as I mentioned this is a pretty technical uh, I am with this 10 millimeter dynamic driver and the balance armature. It's just that uh, you know the details of this is being veiled. Okay, so that's for the technicalities of this. Now let's talk about the sound signature. So let me bring out my graph. All right, so this is the graph of the uh, FH11, and overall listening experience on this is uh, quite a bit of bass. In fact, a lot of emphasis is on the bass uh, with a dark but energetic treble and the overall uh, listening experience is quite of a warm and fun uh, listening experience okay now in terms of the sub bass uh, is above the Harman target right it's pretty uh, prominent 
the rumble is actually very good very analog sounding and very heavy in note weight it's got good extension to the sub bass and the rumble is very uh prominent uh in my tracks so uh but it's not to a level of a bass head level uh type of uh, rumble all right but it's sufficient in fact a little bit more than sufficient uh, if you compare it to harman uh, in terms of the mid bass this is the most prominent uh frequency uh in this tuning is got a lot of punch a lot of impact and it hits me like a bus in terms of the punch and the impact uh, and with the heavy heaviness uh, and the solidness in the the mid bass uh, this is one of the most um, punchy uh, IEM that I've heard so far uh, with the analog type of the roundness the punch is not a very sharp punch it's a pretty round punch Okay, and uh, makes it, uh, I mean, softens the blow a bit uh, and makes it a bit more, well, uh, tolerable. Now, in terms of the mids, the mids are veiled by the mid bass, uh, obviously, as you can see. Uh, and most of the instruments, they sound heavy and rounded and, uh, you know, laid back uh, and veiled by the mid bass. Uh, but they're still clear, right? They're still not as present, it's not as prominent, but the clarity of the instruments are there. Uh, in terms of vocals, vocals, male vocals, they sound better on this. They've got more authority, uh, more presence uh, in the track. Uh, and overall, I prefer listening to male vocals on this uh, as compared to female vocals. Female vocals, they, uh, they sound a little bit laid back, a little bit heavy in the note weight. Uh, and uh, the engagement is a different sense. It's not a very natural engagement as well. So yeah, I prefer listening to male vocals on this. Uh, in terms of the treble, right, the gain of the treble is pretty energetic, but after that, maybe about the 2k region around here, uh, I would hear that, you know, uh, the treble starts to darken, uh, becomes uh, less bright, okay, uh, which makes this a pretty unique IEM, a pretty unique tuning uh, for the treble, uh, because it's actually pretty suitable for those who are sensitive to treble, uh, if you don't want any sibilance or sharpness or any uh, you know harshness and shoutiness uh, this is actually a pretty good IM for that no no shoutiness on this so it's a pretty dark as you can see um, treble uh, and uh, it dips all the way down uh, starting from the 3.5k onwards uh, and uh, it, it levels back up when it comes to the mid treble and the air so it gives back a bit of a naturalness uh, in terms of the roll off of the treble my cymbal strikes and the hi-hats and shakers uh, they do sound a little bit late back as you can see from here but after that it comes back to a very natural uh, roll off okay uh, but the roll off is pretty short right it's uh, you know it's been cut off just a bit you know so uh, simple strikes they they don't have that tail end there uh, the extension to the tail end okay so yeah a pretty unnatural uh, well uh, smooth sounding treble okay Alright, so that's for the overall sound signature of this FH11. Uh, so overall, I would say this is uh, pretty suitable for uh, instrumental uh, music. Uh, and also, you know, those uh, instruments uh, with very low end, okay, uh, they, they sound pretty good on this. Uh, and for vocals, I would say, you know, as I mentioned, uh, male vocals, they sound better on this. But female vocals, I mean, they do sound a bit laid back, but some tracks, they still sound pretty tolerable, uh, especially Mariah Carey. Uh, and you can listen to Mariah Carey without that fatigueness, okay? So, yeah. So, in, in terms of listening, it's casual, it's fun, it's very analog sounding. Uh, and for 40 bucks, uh, in terms of technical wise, this is a very technical uh, IEM, right? Uh, it, it, that definitely performs above its price point. It's just that the tuning is a bit unique and it's targeted more on those who are sensitive to treble. Uh, and uh, overall, I would recommend this for those who are sensitive to treble and also who likes uh, a fatigue free listening experience with a lot of bass, okay? Uh, so yeah, this, I, I do recommend this. I wouldn't recommend this for classical or you know those orchestra uh, music for female vocals as well. So not really suitable for those genre of music, but the rest of it is pretty good. Okay.
and for the rating my star rating for this IEM I would give it a three and a half star uh, rating for this FH11 just because you know it's uh, in terms of technical wise it's a pretty good performer that sound is pretty unique uh, because of the conch shape here uh, very musical and very analog sounding uh, that's that's why it's got this uniqueness to it okay uh, so it's a three and a half star rating from me now let's uh, compare it with its sister which is the FD11 so I, I can give you guys a rough um, difference so for the F D11. Now this has got a brighter sound signature uh, in terms of the treble. Now in both the uh, treble and the uh, the bass, they are almost there, almost similar. It's just that the uh, treble has got a bigger difference. Uh, for the uh, FD11, FD11 uh, has got more uh, less of uh, energetic sound. All right, but it's got a brighter sound. Uh, and it's got more engagement in terms of the treble it brings out more clarity it's a little bit more on the technical side in terms of technical listening uh, than the FH11 uh, FH11 has got more rounded corners uh, for the FD11 it's got more of a sharpness to it more of a catchiness to it uh, not as round as the FH11, not as musical and analog sounding as the FH11. So it depends on your listening experience. So for female vocals, I prefer listening to um, female vocals on the FD11 as compared to the FH11. Okay. Right, so that's a very quick comparison between these two. I would say it depends on your listening experience and what you like to listen to, what type of music you like to listen to, uh, and uh, both of this will suit your listening experience depending on it. All right, so that concludes my overall impression and review of this uh, FIO FH11. Uh, if you guys enjoyed watching this video and learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So that's it for now. I hope you guys have a great day ahead and I'll see you again in my next video. Cheers.